My name is Dave Neff, and I'll be your MC this morning. I'm president of the Parsons College Foundation Fund, and we'd like to welcome you to the second annual Parsons College Wall of Honor Dedication Ceremony. We're honored to have such a great turnout for this event, to recognize members of our student body who have gone on into their chosen professions and have made a mark, not only on Fairfield, the state of Iowa, the country, but also in the world. One year ago, on this weekend, we inducted the inaugural class and honored the following individuals. Wes Bartlett, 1938, Kiwanis International President. Lee Gavel, who was scheduled to be with us this morning, I haven't seen his smile yet, but he, uh, he will be here. Haberdasher Emeritus. Ryan McClinn, class of 69, Senator, Mayor of Dayton, Ohio. Obi Nelson, class of 46, and we have uh, a son, uh, Dick, and daughter, Marilyn, that are with us this morning. So Dick and Marilyn, if you're here, Please. Katie, excuse me. Okay, so we have Nelson family representation here also. Thank you very much for making the trip this morning. Legendary coach, Alan Paul, 1967, he's a state senator. Edward Rogowski, 1965, president of St. Ambrose University in the Quad Cities. Dr. Robert Scott III, class of 63, research physician. Many of you may remember, if you were in school, Marshall Wallace, class of 64, stage and television star. Burl Whittington, class of 52, Shell Oil Executive. And this year, we have a second outstanding class to share with you today. Each year with our spring e-newsletter, we open a nomination period and invite alums to present names of Parsons College students to be considered for the next October Wall of Honor induction ceremony. Our committee consists of Dr. Robert L. Tree, who's on stage with me at this time, uh, Nancy Wortenen, uh, John Braidwood, John Blackstock, and myself. We consider the names, we come to a final consensus, and the nominations are announced in the summer e-newsletter. The vision for the ceremony was shared with us by John Blackstock, class of 64, who will leave shortly. John was also, was also the editor of our Parsons E-News, and he announced the idea that a formal dedication, at the formal dedication of the Alumni Hall here in September of 2008. The recommendation to form a Parsons College Foundation was made by John Braidwood, who is also in attendance today, class of 68, at the all-class reunion summer of 2003. So this has been an ongoing process, and we're just so pleased that it's grown to where it has. Since the announcement of the foundation, John has worked tirelessly to raise funds to assist in construction of the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center, where we're hosted this morning. Total dollars raised from alumni, faculty, and staff during that time period exceed $200,000. Parsons has been very generous to make this facility happen. You'll find the name in the brickyard just outside the main entrance to the atrium on the north side as you, as you exit the building. Nancy Wortenden brought the recommendation to form a Parsons College Alumni Association to a reunion, and currently there are over 2,000 names of alumni in a database. Just think of that. Parsons closed 1973, and now we still have over 2,000 names that we're communicating with. This serves as the heart of information sharing. Nancy is assisted by Doug Marion and Ken Rice. Uh, Nancy and Ken are both with us this morning in managing the information and development of a Parsons College alumni website. If you haven't had a chance to see this yet, you will today. Ed Longenecker, also our committee member, will be available to show uh, those interested in a quick look at the website during the luncheon today and add names to the list. Marshan Ross, who is present today, also a committee member and has coordinated all of the receptions and the luncheon today. Dr. Robert Tree has provided a sounding board for the evolution of this entire process. We will forever be indebted to all these individuals who have given so generously of their time and talent without their energy, enthusiasm, and passion, these events and communication opportunities would not be possible. Please join me as I ask each of these names that I have just read to stand and let's recognize them with a warm round of applause. We would also like to recognize those faculty, staff, and trustees at this time who are present. Would you please rise and remain standing if you hold your applause until all have been recognized. Charles Barnett, admissions. Lee 
Gobble, Board of Directors, Trustees, Ray Ham, Assistant Women's Basketball Coach and Mission Staff, Dr. Biff Coomer, Fiscal Education, David Neff, Fiscal Education, Bob Spencer, Head Women's Basketball Coach, Robert Tree, History and Dean of the College, and Vera Christ Young, Fiscal Education. Those folks who have been uh, with Parsons for the longest, uh, we'd also like to recognize our earliest graduates and our most recent graduate. Uh, once again, I haven't seen Lee Gobble. They said he's going to be here, but many times being uh, a few moments late makes a better entrance for me. <laughs> <laughs> Class of 1937. But then we have a tie with Dean Gabbard and Vera Young, Class of 46, and our most recent graduate, our final graduating class, Pat Arms Peck, 1973. Pat, if you would stand, please. We'd also like to recognize the staff and administration of the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center for their assistance in the preparation for the event. Our Mayor Ed Malloy's remarks were originally scheduled to be, be, be now, but they are moved to the lunch time. That was the moment you've been waiting for, for the second annual induction to the Parsons College Wall of Honor. The procedure will be, I will call the presenter to the podium, and after brief remarks, our honoree will be called to the stage be presented their own personal wall of honor plaque by Dr. Robert Tree. A photo will be taken at this area of the inductee, presenter, and Dr. Tree. The honoree will then be escorted to one of the seats on the far side of the stage, and they will remain there until the completion of the program. <coughs> All posthumous or initiates unable to attend will be represented by family members or friends. Now for our first inductee. I would like to call on the stage Fred Albertson and Phil Como, who will provide the induction for Roger Bachman posthumously. Phil and Fred. <laughs> Sam, if we could have the photo of Roger Bachman presented. Thank you. Westfield is a beautiful place to grow up. It's over 200 years old, it's beautiful colonial homes, and a nice downtown area of quaint little shops. And there's always something to do. There are football games and basketball games, and life was very good then. No one heard about Vietnam, we didn't know where it was or even what it was, and life was full of promise. In a few years, we'd be off to college, and we'd leave our mark upon Roger was a true and loyal friend. He was always there when you needed him. And he had this enthusiasm for life that even the most common event would be a great adventure when you were with him. Here's an important part of my life. When he died, my wife, Laura, and I were expecting our second child. We didn't know whether it would be a boy or a girl, but we decided if it was a boy, we named him Roger Joseph. A month later, Laura was in the sitting in the waiting room. And Farley's obstetrician, Dr. Healy, was the father of a girl Roger and I had gone to school with. And he came out crying and he said, you have a son. And that's the effect Roger had on us. He brought out the very best in us. When Roger died, 